Hello everyone, I'm Samuel Currier, and today we're going to be taking this rather boring looking platformer and turning it into this. So the first thing we're going to do to make this player a little bit more fun to control is add animations. You can use your own or you can download the asset package in the description. For the sake of today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the asset package. We're actually going to want to separate the animations out from the player character. Before then, let's uh, go ahead and quick assign the origin to the bottom of the player sprite. And let's make sure that we have a bounding box set for the collision shape. Now we're going to create a new object. It's going to be a sprite. And you can call it player animator. And then add in your animations. So I'm going to start out with the idle animation. And you can just click the first frame and then the last frame, uh, shift and click to add all of them in all at once. And I'm going to set the name to idle. Now we're going to want to change the properties over here. So I'm going to just do this for the idle animation, but you can adjust all of these properties for the idle run and jump animations, which are the three basic ones that we're going to need. So for this, I know 12 works and I want it to be a loop. And then you can preview your animation here. To simplify the collision shape, you can simply select the collision shape tool, right click, and then set bounding box, and then right click again, and apply to all animations. Now we're going to want to set the origin point to match that of the player. So go ahead and go to the origin point tool, origin, and then bottom. Now right click the origin point again, and apply to all animation. So now you should have a separate player animator object with three animations. The next thing we're going to want to add is a behavior to the player animator. Go ahead and find tween and then pin. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to your player and you're going to want to add a timer. This is for later. It's not important right now, but we're going to need it. And we're about to move on to the coding, but just take the instance that's in your layout of your player animator and go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. Now let's go to the code. This is all I have right now. So we're going to add a new group, add a new subgroup to player. This is going to be player animator. Add an event. We're going to do player on created. Spawn another object. Player animator. The layer, I'm going to do environment for mine, which is the same layer that the player spawns on. Image point zero. And then the player animator is going to pin to object. Pin to object is player, and we don't want the angle to pin. Once that's done, you're finished with one part of this. So as you can see now, we have something pretty basic, although not functional. And we also have another issue. We're going to want to make that original player object invisible. Click on your player object. Scroll all the way down to properties and uncheck initially visibles. Now let's go back to code, go to player, is on floor, and then we're going to create a sub event. You can press B or you can right click, add, and add sub event. And for this sub event, we're going to want to do player is moving, and we're going to copy this event and paste it, and then press I to invert it. So player is moving and player is not moving. For the player is moving, we're going to add an action for the player animator, and we're going to set the animation to run. Okay, and then we're going to copy and paste that action over here. And we're going to set this one to idle since it triggers whenever the player is not moving. And then we're going to add one more condition to each of these, which is player animator is playing, and we're going to set it to the corresponding animation. And then we're going to invert it for both. So this means that this event will only trigger if the animation is not already running. Copy and paste. And set this one to idle. Okay, and now we want the player to, we want the player animator to mirror itself depending on what direction the player is going. So we're going to add another event. Player is moving. Create a sub event and go to system. Compare two values. The first value is going to be player dot platform dot vector x, and then comparison is going to be greater than. If it's greater than zero, 
then the player is moving right. And then copy and paste that and set the second one to less than. That's the only thing you're changing. Now we're going to add an action to the top one. Player animator, set mirrored. We're going to do not mirrored, since not mirrored would be this player facing right, in my example. And then copy and paste, and set the state to mirrored for the second version. OK, so now you should have basic animations, uh, well, basic run and idle animations working for your character. The only thing that's not working right now is the jumping, which we can set very easily. So let's go ahead and close this window. Come over here. Let's add another event. Go to player, is jumping. And then we're adding another condition to this, the same as before, is playing, jump. Invert that, because we only want this to trigger if the animator is not already playing jump. And then set animation to jump. And we're actually going to change platform is jumping to platform is on floor, and we're going to invert that. All right. So now we have basic animations functioning on our player. But even still, this looks better, but it's still boring. So what can we do to improve that? Well, we can add tweens, which will add squash and stretch animations to our player and just make it a little bit more lively and a little bit more interactive for the player. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is all finished. We're going to add a new subgroup. I'm going to call this player tweens. So we're going to add a new event. We're going to go to player. And we're looking for on landed. So when the player lands, the player animator is going to tween two properties. And I'm going to call this land squish. Set the property to scale. And x, I'm going to do uh, x 1.4 and y 0 0.6. And the time, I'm going to set to 0 0.1. That's everything you need to change for this for now. And then add another event. And it's going to be player animations. Go down to tween, on finished. Type in land squish or whatever tag you used. So when that last tween is finished, we're going to have it reset. So go to tween two properties, scale. We're going to set the tag to scale reset. And then end x and end y should be 1. And the time I'm going to set to 0 0.1. So once the player squishes and they're done squishing, they're going to reset back to the normal scale. All right, now we're going to add another thing. If the player is moving, create a sub event, player animations, is mirrored, and then go ahead and copy and paste that, set the next one to inverted, is mirrored. So if the player is moving and the player is mirrored, then it is going to tween one property. We're going to change the angle a little bit. All right, and we're going to set this to lean left. End value, we're going to do negative three since it's going to the left. And then time, we're going to set 0 0.1. Now let's copy and paste that action. Oh, I'm sorry, copy and paste. And we're going to change the left to right. And we're going to change the negative 3 to 3. Everything else will be the same. Let's add an event below that if the player is not moving. So do player is moving and then invert it. Then the player animations is going to tween one property. Angle. Set the tag to angle reset 0 0.1 oh sorry end value should be 0 actually and time is 0 
All right. And now we're going to want to add a jump tween as well. So add another event, player. And we're going to do is jumping. And we're going to add another event to this because we're about to tweak something else as well. Player is jumping. Search for trigger only once while true. So the way we're going to set up the jump mechanic won't let us use platform on jump. It won't trigger because we're not actually going to use the simulate jump function or the simulate jump action. Um, we're going to be using the set vector y. So anyway, go ahead and make sure you have platform is jumping and then trigger only once. So it'll only tween once for every time that it's jumping. And then go to player animations, tween two properties, and this is going to be jump squish. Property is going to be scale. X we're going to do uh, 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.8. And then Y we're going to do 1.2. And time we're going to do 1 point, or 0 0.1. All right. Now we have a player that leans a little bit. And he's very squishy, which for a tomato seems to work pretty well. So the last thing we need to add is a jump forgiveness system. So most platformers have something like this to make platforming just a little bit more fluid and a little bit more responsive. So you're going to want to go over here to your jump function. This is way too basic for what we're going to be doing. We do not want to use simulate uh, platform press and jump. So we're going to delete that. But we need to add one thing to the player before we can truly make this work. Actually, two things, two variables. So the first one is going to be a number. Let's call this jump forgiveness. All right, let's set this number to, I like to use 0 0.1. I think it works pretty well. And add one more, but this is going to be a Boolean. Set this to can jump. Press OK. You don't have to change anything for the default value. We're going to be handling all of that here. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is add a sub event to on W pressed or on jump, your jump button. And then go to player is Boolean instance variable set can jump. Then we're going to copy this and paste it. We're going to invert it. So now we have if the Boolean is true and if the Boolean is not true. If it is true, the player is going to set that Boolean to false. And then the player is going to set vector y to negative self dot platform dot jump strength. So you're still using the same jump strength value that's right here. So you can still tweak how high the player jumps. Okay. And then over here for player is not able to jump or sorry, not is can jump, which is just not correct English, but it's okay. If the player can't jump, we're going to set a timer for self dot jump forgiveness, which is the duration. Uh, that's the variable we set earlier. 0 0.1 seconds is what mine is set to. And the tag is going to be jump on land. Now we're going to add another event. Player on landed. And then we're going to add another condition. Is timer running? And we're going to type jump on land. So just copy and paste the event or the actions you used for your can jump is true into here. Now we need to add one more thing. So if the player is not on the floor, so go ahead and invert that. And go back to uh, add a new condition. Is timer running? And this one's going to be jump forgiveness. So if the player is not on the floor and then jump forgiveness is not running and add another condition and can jump is true. If all of that is the case, then the 
jump forgiveness timer is going to start. Duration, you're going to do self dot jump forgiveness. Tag set to jump forgiveness. And then on timer, jump forgiveness. Jump forgiveness. On this timer, then can jump is going to be set to false. Okay, and we just need to add a few more things. So player is on floor. You can actually just copy and paste this. Set can jump to false, except we're going to change the value to true. So if the player isn't on floor, we're going to set can jump to true always. So now what we have here is a player with basic animations that are made better by tweening using squash and stretch techniques. And then we also have a jump forgiveness system, which lets the player jump just a little bit before landing or lets the player jump just a little bit after falling. So that was today's tutorial. I hope it helped you out. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them down below. Thank you for watching.